Hey everybody, Anne here. Yes, a little bit of a cliffhanger at that last video of mine. Well, I definitely have to do something with this van. So the first step was getting it cleaned out. Look at it, it is just a disgrace. And to think that I used to work and live out of this van, oh my goodness. Yeah, that black stuff I had taped to the ceiling to help insulate it a little bit, and it actually worked, believe it or not. But it had to come down. All of that insulation is covered up by all that stuff. I have to find somewhere to put that and just get it all cleaned up and tidied up. And who knows what it's going to look like when it's all done. There it is, all cleaned up. I took the plywood floor out of the, the main part because I think I'm going to use it to build something else. It's very thin, but I can still use it to build something. I'm probably going to leave the plywood in the back there. Uh, just because There is the rubber matting underneath it as well. So have any of you guessed what I'm going to do with this van? What am I going to do with this van? Am I going to sell it? Am I going to junk it, part it out? Am I going to move back into it? I don't know. I was chatting with Kat on Facebook Messenger and she sent me this photo. Well, it was actually a different one. It had some wording on it. Uh, it was a meme of some kind. But I had been in passing thinking about turning the van into a chicken coop and I thought, oh my goodness, is this actually a thing? Well, apparently it is a thing. People have been using all kinds of vehicles or parts of vehicles and turning them into chicken coops. Look at that one. Oh, this next one is very cool. Look at this, an old police car. And check this out too. And so I went scaring the internet and then I found this channel who converted an old truck into a chicken coop so I'll put the link to the video down below and I thought you know I've got this old van that is completely out of commission I think I can do this I really wanted to do the deep litter method but how was I going to accomplish this in a van so here's the steps that I took I did a bunch of research and reading and watching and talking to people and explained what I'm trying to do and it was suggested that I start with dirt on the floor first because I've got the plywood in the back and then I've got the rubber matting underneath everything that works as a moisture barrier too. So I went and just got a bunch of dirt and the dirt that I have is basically a mixture of dirt, hummus compost, mulch, dried leaves, dried pine needles and whatnot. So I just started throwing that into the back of the van after I had, you know, cleaned everything out and whatnot and put a nice, oh, I would say a couple inches of dirt down into the bottom. Then I put down a layer of straw. I used every bit of straw that I had left out of the big bag that a subscriber had sent me and it's been working out really well for the chickens. I even use it in my compost toilet sometimes. It has a really beautiful earthy smell. So I just put a layer of that down. I put the little chicken coop, at least this part of it, back there and hopefully I'll be able to get them to go up there and sleep because I've got their little heating mat in there kind of propped up against a wall to keep them, you know, warm because they still don't have all their feathers yet. And then here I've got their roost. It is just a pallet that had been kind of partially broken down, but it has a couple rungs on it still so they can hop up there. But I was a little worried that the first rung was a little bit too high for them, but really not because they can fly. So I went and found a big stick and I just kind of put that up there because I noticed as they played in the play yard outside, they love to get up on that roost. So I put that down there and I just, you know, I'm looking around and I can see definitely it needs more layers of straw. And back there, oh, that's a little sandbox that I put there. I got some sand from a an abandoned anthill and it is perfect. It's a perfect consistency for them. It doesn't get too dusty, but it's nice for them to get in there and kind of flap around if you know what I mean. I may end up suspending the feeder and waterer, but for now I've just got it up on this little platform so that hopefully it'll stay a little bit cleaner and the chickens will be able to find the water and the food hopefully without any problems. So let's see what it looks like with chickens in it. I had to turn the volume down because Judy was just barking so crazy in the background. She gets really upset if I don't pay a whole lot of attention to her. So I put the chickens in and I'm just kind of like looking in through the barn door. The barn, one of the doors on the side is open and they just started hunting and pecking around. They could have cared less about their food and water. There were plenty of things for them to hunt for and eat in the soil that I put down in the bottom. Just look at them go.
Look, one found the food. Will she go over and drink the water? I'm so worried that they're not getting enough water. Is she gonna do it? Will she do it? Oh, man. Come on, chicken, go, go get some water, then you can show all your other sisters where the water is. I don't know, there's a chance she may still do it. Oh, oh, is she gonna go? She's eating all the oatmeal. Oh, come on, chicken, please go find the water. Oh, there's a fly. She gets distracted by a fly. Look at you beautiful chicken. This is not pasty or Patsy. She is the second smallest one. Look at their cute little tail feathers. I just think they're so cute. Please go drink some water. Oh, come on. Get some water. Darn it, she's not going to do it. So close. But no cigar. I decided I'd try this method. Just dip the beak in a little bit, then let her go and hopefully she'll come back later. Tell her sisters that there's water and come back and drink later. I'm such a worry ward over these chickens. I could tell right away that I definitely need more layering. I mean, I knew that I was going to need more, more bedding down in there. You need about uh, four to six inches just to start out. So I think what I'm going to get is pine shavings. That is the most highly recommended, even above straw. So today I'm going to go get some. That's Patsy. That's sunshine. They're just so happy in here. They love it. Goodness. Today I'm going to focus on getting chicken wire up in front of the two barn doors so that I can leave the doors open all day long and the chickens can't get out and I'm going to do that to the back doors as well, at least the one that can open so that I can leave that open as well and I want to keep the windows open on the inside, they just kind of push out so they don't stay open very far. So the thing that you have to take into consideration when using the deep litter method is well, ventilation. There's got to be plenty of ventilation, and it doesn't have that right now unless I can keep the doors open at least during the day. So that's what I'm going to do, and that's all I got for you guys today. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.